Uh, when I see a patient that comes in to want to talk about their erections, particularly in the young group, it's whether it's mentioned to me or not, whether the patient brings it up or not, I just dive right into the discussion of testosterone because I am sure that they have researched that and they have wondered about that on the internet. Um, the history of testosterone supplementation, it, it very much mirrors the introduction of creams and gels and the ability to do it easily. Um, there was a period of time where there were many, many different testosterone preparations. There's one to put on your chest. There's one to put under your arms. There's implanted pellets. There's, And the reason there were so many different ways to do it is because what drug companies did is they took testosterone and they got FDA approval for something that patients assume went through the same process as everything else, which was to show that you know, if you have something, let's use erectile dysfunction as an example, you must, well, if it's on the market and it's FDA approved, they must have taken a thousand patients with ED and 500 of them got fake gel and 500 of them got testosterone. And they must have shown that patients with the testosterone did much better. But actually, none of those studies had ever been done. What was patented and what was FDA approved was purely the delivery systems. That's all. So all they had to show the FDA was that if you rub this gel on your chest, that if you'd rub this gel on your chest, that it raises your testosterone. That's all. If you put this on your armpit, it raises your testosterone. If you implant a pellet, it raises that. It, it didn't ever show that it does anything for you. Um, the, the problem here is, is that practically everyone that has mood disorder or is depressed or just unhappy, which is most men with erectile dysfunction. They're not happy about the situation. Their testosterone is always going to be low normal. It's just what happens. It's a biological phenomenon or it's going to be just under the normal line. Also, I did some research into this. The normal range of testosterone on a lab test is generally gotten from young men, like 21-year-old men. It's not older men and everyone's testosterone declines as they get older. It's just a natural part of life. So there was a creation of the concept of think testosterone for everything that ails you. When you give yourself testosterone, what's going to happen is your brain is going to tell your testicles, don't make any. Because usually, even when your testosterone's a little bit low, it's for whatever reason, your brain is just saying, I want it to be low. This is where I'm happy. There are exceptions, of course, but the general person just has a very low normal or borderline testosterone, and that's almost never the causative problem with one's erections. Um, I can tell you that uh, psychiatrists now treat depression commonly with testosterone because they're noticing that it's low in that, in that arena. So patients will come in asking for testosterone. Testosterone supplementation will affect your fertility. And it tends to be a one-way street because if you go on it, now your testicles stop making it. Then when you stop it, you see that you're, it's really low and then you're on it for the rest of your life. So um, I, I do go down the road of testosterone when it sounds like that could be the problem. Someone who all of a sudden has a problem, someone who says they have no interest in sex. That's going to be more of the telltale tale, or I'm just lying around all the time. There's something wrong with me. Um, if there really is something wrong in that way, commonly I'll refer patients to endocrinologists for a bigger workup. But it's much healthier, I find, not to go down the road of testosterone and say, I have an idea. Why don't we try pills first? And if that solves your problem, that's a much simpler way to do it than going down the road with testosterone. Supplementation of testosterone in my practice tends to be patient-driven, more so than a recommendation that I give them.